Welcome to BSW's Tech Dive. Tech, tech Dive. The birds, the ship. The show goes technically deep into products you care about. <laughs> the new, the old, the newish. So put on your gear, close up the hatch, and prepare to dive, dive. The birds, the ship. And now, here's John. Hi, and welcome to this edition of BSW Tech Dive. I am John Lynch, Director of Business Development here at Broadcast Supply Worldwide, bswusa.com. Today's topic is engineering installation. Now, those of you who've watched this show would say, what in the world are you talking about, Lynch? You're an old sportscaster. What do you know about engineering installation? I'll admit, very little. But I've learned a lot especially over the last number of years when it's not done correctly it costs you the end user with your new studio a lot of time and a lot of money that's why we are so thrilled to announce our relationship now with a company called inrush we provide the equipment they do the installation and it's really important because in today's world of broadcasting so many engineering groups don't have the time because of all the responsibilities they have with their various stations. And a lot of times engineers are working at two and three in the morning. Well, an arrangement with BSW and Inrush to get the installation done saves time, actually saves money and gets your new gear on the air quickly. My guest is Sean Dolan from Inrush and Sean, welcome to the program. And you know, one thing that is different when we talk about inrush versus bsw i definitely have a lot of years on me you guys don't but you've got a lot of experience so a young group really <laughs> adaptive and great to have you with bsw and inrush welcome thank you so much john it's uh, good to be here with you and good to be partnering uh with bsw you know um obviously bsw has been uh, someone we've worked with for for a long time, um, so it's it's good to actually um, you know put some words um, into our relationship um, and figure out ways we can help our mutual customers together. Well, and that's so important as I was alluding to because of engineers on site, station engineers, they're incredibly busy. When are they going to get around to educating and and installing new gear, especially if it's new technology? But you folks at Inrush, you're all up to date on the new technology and you save the customer a lot of time in your installs. Right. Yeah, it's a, kind of a privilege to be in our position um, because, you know, like you said, unfortunately, um, broadcast engineers have plenty to do. Um, they're running around at the transmitter site. Um, sometimes they're you know, being facilities folks uh, in wrapped up into their job descriptions. Um, and, and they have, they're being asked to do uh, more and more with less. And at the same time, uh, technology is evolving so quickly that it's hard to keep up if you're not dealing with this new technology all the time. Um, and this spans from um, audio over IP systems at the studio um, to um, audio transport methods out to the transmitter site to, uh, you know, transmitters uh, out of the transmitter site uh, as well. So really end to end, um, things change really rapidly. There's not time to uh, spend playing with and, and learning um, often in a, a local engineering role. And so that's where we get to come in and work with a local engineer and essentially bring their vision to life and act as their hands and feet. And it's incredibly timely because of the amount of time that you're saving the customer because let's face it when a factory ships gear the warranty clock has started and sure. i've had a couple of instances over the years and i'm thrilled about this relationship we have with inrush now whereas the company decided to have their local engineers do the install they had no experience with the new digital technology and a year later was not on the air. Now, you guys, you deal with this stuff all the time. You know it in front with you when you're already going there. In fact, give us an example of how your relationship with a BSW customer goes from starting intro date to the date you're on site. 
Sure. So what's really nice about working with BSW is that um, your team, John, has a whole you know picture of the customer and, and what they're needing, um, starting from when you started quoting them, right? Uh, as you know, BSW is often uh, our mutual customers' first stop uh, when they want to do a project because the focus is on the core equipment. And so um, while they've been advised on that by their BSW um, sales reps, uh, the actual installation part um, is sort of left until a little bit later in the process. And that's when when we come in, uh, we you know talk with uh, the BSW reps to figure out what this customer is looking for, uh, what their budget is, uh, what their sort of attitude is towards the the project, and sort of how they run their their business. You know, you you all have had long relationships with with many of these folks and know them really well. So we get that sort of background. We talk about the project, and then uh, we can relatively quickly turn around a estimate uh, to let everyone know. You know, time frame, what will be required, what the dependencies are, um, to actually get this gear installed so instead of having to sit on the gear you know maybe you have to uh you know uh, spend some money before the end of the quarter um you know due to the capital you know expenditure uh timelines um and you need to get it installed uh as well even though that doesn't really work out with your schedule as a local engineer um through this relationship with bsw we can really streamline the process and make it such that um, there's a really clear path between the equipment uh, you're purchasing from from BSW and the actual service needed to uh, install it, right? And of course, uh, train local staff. Training very key. But I'm also thinking of: is this a fair way to sum it up in a really tiny, short way? Is that we and the customer have figured out what they want, what they want to do, and you figure out how to make it fly? Exactly. Yeah, and and that's. A hard part of the process, right, is figuring out, yeah, what uh, pieces and, and parts, at least the big pieces and parts. Uh, so, yeah, we like to come in and fill in the little gaps and then, yeah, make a plan to, to execute the vision. And it's not like you're a one-man band. Inrush has got uh, talented engineers doing this around the country. Yeah, and, you know, much like BSW, you're not dealing with, you know, just one person or just two people. You have a whole deep bench of folks, each with their own uh, specialties and level of knowledge uh, about different um, areas uh, within the industry. So we like to rely on that. You know, our, our staff currently, uh, we're at, I believe, 13 um, across the company. Um, and uh, we're able to, you know, because, you know, these are full-time uh, people for, you um, uh, the most part, uh, with a couple exceptions um, of like operation staff, for example, um, we're able to have a long history with our folks as well. So you're not dealing with, um, you know, one integrator who then maybe brings in, you know, some buddies or uh, some sort of people locally to be hands and feet. You're dealing with a, a real team um, that has worked together, that knows each other, uh, knows each other's strengths and weaknesses. And so even that in and of itself, from a project management standpoint, can can really help things out just like at bsw uh where uh if you have a uh question about something uh, that you're just not familiar with john you have you know 10 other people you can go to um to to get an answer although i'm sure it doesn't happen often because you do know everything oh except for i'm most famous for the answer to the question how does it work works real good <laughs> That's what I know. But anyway, that's what you get <laughs> sure from the does. old sportscaster of BSW. But if you've got an event you want announced, I'm your guy. But if you want to get it installed properly, in rush are the people to do that. Now, also, what's the primary question beyond what's it going to cost, Sean? What's the next most popular question you get asked? It's, of course, how long is it going to take? Um, and, and that can vary a bit, you know, but, but that's where understanding the customer's priorities and uh, timelines ahead of that conversation comes into play because we can sort of already start formulating a, a plan and some, some estimates, at least some, um, some options of how long things will take with some different trade-offs, um, you know, how we can stage the project um, if, you know, maybe the entire project, you know, can't be done in a single four-week period, um, but we can split it up you know, do the first half in, in two weeks and um, be able to, you know, service that customer faster uh, than we would if, if doing the whole uh, project. And 
uh, we have done that, you know, quite a bit, uh, you know, staging projects. Uh, we've, we've gotten pretty familiar with, you know, what customers' workflows are and, uh, you know, what they can tolerate in terms of um, a sort of split facility. Um, and so, um, again, working with BSW, whether that be understanding the timeline um, or understanding, you know, lead time for equipment, um, you know, we can have that really tight uh, integration, uh, pun intended, um, throughout uh, all the major players in the project to, you know, make it happen. Now, does it always or not necessarily always require an on-site visit before you can give them your ultimate quote and timeline and that sort of thing? Oh, that's a great, great, uh, great point. No, um, it, it often doesn't require a on-site visit. Now, of course, if you're dealing with a massive studio project, um, you know, for example, a, a build in place, it often is just easier um, for one of us to fly out or a couple of us to fly out and, you know, meet you and, uh, you know, take a tour of the facility and, and understand uh, more than we could through pictures or, or videos, you know, how the staff uses it and, and what your priorities are. Um, but for, you know, smaller projects, uh, you know, uh, if it's a single studio, perhaps, um, or if it's an ancillary system like a phone system, uh, those things uh, can often be done entirely remotely. Again, there's there's trade-offs. Um, for example, you know, if we're installing like a phone system, it's much, much easier to train staff being physically there. But um, if, uh, you know, a customer is a bit more budget sensitive um, and is willing to, to make that sort of small trade-off to have you know, remote training and remote work and have their local engineer spend a bit more time um, on the install than they would if it was a turnkey on-site uh, uh, sort of install, um, then, you know, that can represent some real savings uh, you know, for that, that customer and really align with with their needs and the ideal arrangement is all of the gear is delivered on monday and you start on tuesday in theory anyway <laughs> right 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 <laughs> of course yeah but we all know that doesn't happen and again um you know uh, uh, some of the you know supply chain issues i think it's fair to say have, have calmed down a bit um but uh, there's still some lingering effects uh, not to mention just you know general you know there can be shipping issues as, as much as uh, you know, BSW and, and the manufacturer and everybody else works together to uh, make things happen on time. There's always things outside of uh, their control and our control that, that happen. Um, and so being able to pivot really quickly um, to uh, keep on moving on a project when not everything is going to plan because it never does um, is something that uh, we really enjoy. You've got the experience and your company, InRush, has got the experience. By the way, we're talking with Sean Dolan from InRush in doing all kinds of installations, including what we're on right now, HDV Mixer, the new AI version of HDV Mixer with AirLink. So that's part of a studio installation, and you know how to do that, too. Yeah, um, it is really great to see, you know, um, the adoption of video. I know we've been saying this for a long time, uh, but the adoption of, of video in radio studios, you know, as things become often more consolidated um, and we have, you know, syndicated shows that are um, broadcast across multiple markets, it's a much easier um, uh, selling point from a business standpoint to invest in a system like this because it makes it a lot easier to, you know, create content for uh, social media and, of course, connect it, integrate it. Uh, where we come in, uh, uh, integrate it with your existing um, audio over IP system and do some really cool uh, stuff with scripting, et cetera, that um, makes the system uh, really uh, shine. Now, a tough question. Is there one that you can cite, one type of problem that is most common in doing this that, you know, I would think somebody, oh, you forgot to tell me this or something along those lines. What happens here? Sure. Um, you know, I, I think it, and it's, it, as you alluded to, um, the most common challenges are not technical, at least, you know, from our point of view, uh, the, the technical part can often be the sort of easier part and, and the part that's, that's replicated, um, the making sure everyone's aligned and um, handling communication between all the different folks involved in a project, whether that be multiple folks on the same level at the local level uh, or an entire hierarchy of, of folks ranging, um, you know, from, from corporate down to, to local um, and making sure everybody um, is involved to the right degree. Um, that part is what takes uh, quite a bit of 
um, energy and focus, but it's really important. And I think one of the things that helps set us apart is that, you know, we don't just sort of roll in um, in our uh, jorts and, uh, you know, uh, slicked back, uh, you know, um, hair uh, and and say, I'm here to install the equipment and don't talk to me and whatever. Um, that, that just doesn't really fly anymore. Um, there's just too much on the line. And um, it's also just not fun for us. We like to get to know folks. So uh, being able to, to come in and uh, have a really comfortable and safe relationship uh, with the with the staff um, is really one of the first things that we try and do to prevent communication problems down the road. And of course, the biggest issue, it may, a goal there is day one, when they sign on with the new gear, it all works. They know what they're doing too, because you've got to have some training as you alluded to earlier in the program. And so you get the staff ready, you get the gear ready. And so when it's time to sign on for the morning show at six o'clock on Monday, it's all ready to go, including the staff. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a huge part of it as well. It, it, exactly. Um, not just the setting expectations part, but um, the, the training as well and making sure people feel comfortable using the new equipment. You know, it's very easy to say, um, you know, as an engineer, what's the big deal? It's still a radio studio. It's still a console with faders and on and off buttons. You have a microphone, you have headphones, you have your automate, you know, like, one could, you know, say, uh, what's, what's the big deal? But, you know, from the empathetic side, you know, we're really changing a lot. And uh, the, you know, the show uh, this person may be doing is an extension of, of them, and they have a lot riding on it. And so making sure they've had time to whatever degree they'd like to uh, come in and ask questions ahead of time, um, regardless of, you know, the project timeline, um, you know, it, it's never, it's never really okay to just throw people into a new studio with, with no handholding. Um, and like you said, when the morning show comes in, because we have multiple people on staff and we have someone, you know, one or two people managing the project and other folks executing, um, we have the ability to stagger schedules a bit without burning anybody out. So we can make sure we have, you know, coverage there. So someone can just sort of lean over and ask a question um, about the new system um, from, you know, until the, from the morning show, it comes in at 5.45 a.m. Uh, all the way until the uh, evening person's done at, you know, um, midnight and then, you know, do it all over again. This is a great situation, you know, in BSW in my history, going back into a previous century. But uh, there was a time when we were not really no noted as being like a transmitter source. Well, now we are one of the biggest transmitter sources in the country. And of course, sure. we've got the major lines in digital uh, studio gear, etc. We've got over 400 trusted partners and resources with various uh, uh, vendors. And now we have another one in rush. Sean Dolan, great to have you with us. Anybody that uh, is in need of a new studio setup and you want to also get it coordinated so you can get the installation, that's where you contact us at BSW, your favorite sales rep. There's the phone number. Not over there. Over there. There we go. Where'd it go? I know he's forget. How that's it. There it is. Okay. You got it. 800-426-8434. And we work directly with InRush so you get exactly what you need and when you need it on your studio installation. Sean Dolan from InRush, thanks for joining us on this edition of BSW Tech Dive. John, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, and um, we're looking forward to continuing to work together. Absolutely. It'll be great. And again, there it is, 426-8434, 800-426-8434. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.